Greetings, thrill, seekers. You're tuned in to the heart, pounding channel, storyteller. I'm Thomas, your guide into the realm of spine, chilling mysteries that unfold high above in the branches. Yes, the treehouse, the sun may set, but the tales are just beginning. Buckle up for a ride into the unknown where imagination meets fear. Subscribe, hit that bell, and let's unearth the terror right here on Treehouse Horror Stories. Thomas at the helm, let's dive in. The day we stepped into our new home, excitement pulsed through every fiber of our beings. It was a quaint house, nestled in a peaceful neighborhood with a charming treehouse in the backyard. As a young couple, my partner Sarah and I couldn't believe our luck. It was a place where we could build our dreams together. The treehouse was the jewel of our backyard, perched high among the branches of an ancient oak. It exuded a sense of childhood nostalgia that instantly captivated us. We imagined lazy Sunday mornings sipping coffee, gazing out over the serene landscape from that cozy wooden perch. Little did we know that treehouse held secrets far darker than our wildest imaginings. One crisp evening, curiosity got the best of us. Hand in hand, we ascended the rickety ladder, our excitement palpable. The treehouse had an eerie charm as moonlight filtered through the leaves, casting ethereal shadows on the wooden floor. That night, our dreamy thoughts were laced with a foreboding undercurrent. As the days passed, our perfect haven started to unravel. Odd occurrences unfolded, small things misplaced, strange whispers that seemed to float on the wind, and an uneasy sensation that someone was watching us. Sarah and I exchanged uneasy glances, unable to shake off the feeling that our home was no longer exclusively ours. One night, a shuffling sound outside drew us to the window. Our hearts raced as we saw figures moving stealthily in and around the treehouse. It was impossible to count how many. They seemed like shadowy phantoms slipping through the darkness. We watched in stunned silence as they lit candles and gathered in what looked like an eerie ritual. Who are they? Sarah's voice trembled beside me. I had no answers. Fear gnawed at my insides, but curiosity kept me glued to the window. The flickering candlelight revealed their faces, men and women worn by life's hardships, eyes gleaming with an unsettling fervor. As the night deepened, their activities grew more disturbing. They huddled around a crude altar, muttering incantations that sent shivers down our spines. Their intentions were clear. They weren't mere squatters seeking shelter. They were up to something sinister. The next morning we decided to investigate. With daylight on our side we ventured into the treehouse, our apprehension bubbling beneath the surface. The scene that greeted us was straight out of a nightmare. Symbols etched into the wooden floor, strange relics adorning the walls, and a pervasive sense of malevolence hanging in the air. We need to do something, I whispered to Sarah. She nodded, her eyes wide with a mix of fear and determination. We contacted the authorities, but progress was slow. Days turned into weeks, and the squatters grew bolder, venturing closer to our home. Sleep eluded us, our nights fraught with unease and our days plagued by anxiety. Our haven had turned into a prison, and the treehouse that once held so much promise now loomed like a haunting specter. One evening, unable to bear the torment any longer, we devised a plan. We gathered evidence of the squatters' activities, documenting their rituals and capturing their faces and photographs. Armed with proof, we confronted them, our voices shaking, but our resolve unyielding. We know what you're doing, I said, my voice surprisingly steady. It's time to leave. Their reaction was a chilling mix of anger and desperation. They insisted they were connected to the land, that the treehouse held ancient power they were tapping into. My heart raced as they spoke, their eyes ablaze with fervor that bordered on madness. The authorities finally intervened, but the squatters had vanished like smoke in the wind, leaving behind only traces of their unsettling presence. Our home, once tainted by their darkness, 
slowly returned to a semblance of normalcy. The treehouse, now devoid of their presence, stood as a silent witness to the horrors that had unfolded within its walls. As time passed, Sarah and I found solace in each other's embrace. Our love had weathered a storm that few could comprehend, and the treehouse, once a symbol of fear, now held a different kind of power. The power of our unwavering bond. In the end, our dream home had become a crucible of fear, testing the limits of our courage and strength. But as we looked out from our bedroom window at the treehouse, I realized that no darkness could overshadow the light we had rekindled within ourselves. Our story was one of survival, of reclaiming our sanctuary, and of cherishing the moments of tranquility that came after the storm. In the stillness of the night, when the moon painted silvery pathways on the ground, I found myself standing at my bedroom window, my heart pounding with a cocktail of excitement and trepidation. The world outside was veiled in darkness, but the allure of adventure was irresistible. Tonight, I was going to meet my boyfriend Alex, in the old treehouse nestled deep within the woods behind our house. Little did I know that this seemingly daring escapade would soon spiral into a horrifying ordeal beyond my wildest imagination. The treehouse was a relic of my childhood, a place where I'd spent countless afternoons weaving fantasies and secrets with my friends. Tonight, it was to be the backdrop for a romantic rendezvous with Alex. My parents were fast asleep, blissfully unaware of my plans as I slipped out of the house, careful not to disturb the quiet of the night. I walked through the woods, my footsteps muffled by the thick carpet of fallen leaves. The air was thick with the scent of damp earth and the distant sound of crickets. A nervous thrill coursed through me. I was breaking the rules, venturing into the forbidden territory of teenage rebellion. As the treehouse came into view, a rush of nostalgia washed over me. Its silhouette was etched against the moonlit sky, a dark shadow that held both familiarity and an air of mystery. I climbed the rickety ladder and entered the wooden sanctuary, my heart racing with anticipation. Hey, Alex whispered, his voice a comforting balm for my jittery nerves. He pulled me into a warm embrace and suddenly, the world seemed to fade away, leaving only the two of us. We sat in the treehouse, talking and laughing as Tuam danced by in the company of whispered secrets and stolen keyses. But as the night wore on, an uneasiness settled in the pit of my stomach like a lingering doubt that refused to be ignored. I tried to shake off the feeling, chalking it up to nerves, but an ominous energy seemed to seep into the air. A rustling sound from outside cut through our laughter, sending a chill down my spine. Did you hear that? I whispered, my voice barely audible. Alex turned his head, his expression cautious. Probably just a squirrel or something, but I knew it wasn't. The woods held secrets, and tonight, they were whispering something sinister. A cold shiver crawled down my back as I looked out of the window, my eyes scanning the darkness. My heart pounded as I caught a fleeting glimpse of movement. Something large, something large, something that shouldn't have been there. Alex, there's something outside, I urged, my voice trembling. He peered out, his brows furrowing in confusion. I don't see anything. You're just spooking yourself. But I knew what I'd seen. As the tension in the air thickened, we fell into a hushed silence, the weight of the unknown pressing down upon us. Suddenly, a low growl echoed through the night, chilling me to the bone. Panic surged within me, and I grabbed onto Alex's arm, my nails digging into his skin. What was that? I gasped, my eyes wide with terror. Before he could respond, a pair of gleaming eyes emerged from the shadows, fixating on us with an eerie intensity. The creature stepped into the moonlight, revealing a form that defied all logic. Its body was a grotesque fusion of sinew and scale, its limbs twisted into an unnatural arrangement. My mind struggled to comprehend what I was seeing. It was a nightmare given life a creature that had no place in the realm of the living. As it advanced toward us, a primal fear gripped me, freezing me in place. Alex and I huddled in the corner of the treehouse, our breaths shallow and rapid. The creature's guttural growls reverberated through the air, its intentions unknown but undeniably malevolent. 
Stay back, Alex shouted, his voice a mixture of fear and bravado. He reached for a discarded branch, brandishing it like a feeble weapon. But the creature paid no heed, its sinister gaze fixed solely on me. In that moment, I realized that I was its target, its chosen victim. With a burst of adrenaline, fueled courage, I grabbed a nearby flashlight and aimed it at the creature. The beam of light cut through the darkness, revealing its monstrous form in stark detail. For an instant, the creature recoiled, its eyes narrowing against the harsh light. It seemed to hesitate, as if uncertain about confronting this newfound source of illumination. It bought us a precious moment of reprieve, and without thinking, we scrambled down the ladder, fleeing from the treehouse and into the woods. We ran, branches scraping our skin, the woods a labyrinth of shadows and terror. Fear lent us wings as we sprinted toward the safety of our home, the creature's growls echoing behind us. It pursued us relentlessly, its monstrous form never far behind. Finally, our house came into view, a beacon of salvation in the darkness. We burst through the door, gasping for air, our hearts pounding in our chest. The creature, unable or unwilling to cross the threshold, stood just beyond the porch, its eyes burning with an otherworldly rage. As the first rays of dawn broke over the horizon, the creature retreated, its form melting into the shadows from whence it came. The nightmarish encounter left an indelible mark on me, a reminder that the boundaries between our world and the unknown were fragile, easily breached by forces beyond comprehension. I never ventured near the treehouse again. The memories of that night's terror forever reach in memories of that night's terror forever reach in me. Alex and I, once bound by love, were now united by a shared secret that we couldn't possibly explain to anyone else. And as the years went by, I often found myself staring into the night, wondering about the enigma that had invaded our lives. A creature that defied reason, a nightmare that had become all too real. In the quiet outskirts of a small town, nestled within a lush expanse of woods, lived a man named Daniel. He was a solitary soul, seeking solace and escape from the demands of life's hustle and bustle. And so, with his own two hands and a heart full of determination, he embarked on a project that would become his haven, a treehouse. This was to be his sanctuary, a place where he could leave behind the stress of the world and immerse himself in the soothing embrace of nature. The construction was an endeavor of love and labor, each beam and plank carefully chosen, each nail driven with precision. Perched high in the boughs of a towering oak, the treehouse offered a breathtaking view of the woods that stretched as far as the eat. The tranquility of the surroundings was a balm for Daniel's weary soul. Days turned into weeks as Daniel put the finishing touches on his creation. He added a comfortable hammock, a small table, and even a wind chime that tinkled softly in the breezy. The treehouse was a testament to his dedication, a tribute to his need for an escape. As the sun set on its final day of construction, Daniel climbed the ladder and settled into the hammock, a satisfied smile on his lips. As time went on, the treehouse became Daniel's refuge. He'd spend hours there, lost in the pages of a book or simply gazing out at the beauty of the woods. But soon, a feeling of unease began to creep into his peaceful retreat. His heart skipped a beat as he turned, peering into the gathering darkness. There, in the depths of the woods, he caught a fleeting glimpse of a figure, a silhouette that seemed to dance in the shifting shadows. Dismissing it as a trick of the imagination, he returned to his book, but a nagging sensation lingered at the back of his mind. The feeling of being watched, of not being alone, settled in like an unwelcome guest. Daniel couldn't shake it off. It gnawed at his consciousness, even in the safety of his treehouse. Night after night, the whispers grew louder, the shadows more insistent. The woods seemed to come alive with an energy that was both captivating and terrifying. Every time he ventured to look beyond the treehouse, he'd catch glimpses of movement, as though something just beyond the periphery of his vision was beckoning him. One moonlit night as he sat in his treehouse, his unease reached its peak. The wind chime, now a source of dread, jingled with an otherworldly tone. The whispers were no longer faint. They were urgent, desperate, like voices crying out from the darkness. A cold sweat broke out on his forehead as he turned to the window 
his heart racing, and there, illuminated by the pale moonlight, stood the figure that had haunted his thoughts, a woman, draped in tattered garments, her hair flowing like midnight tendrils. Her eyes were empty voids, staring directly into his soul. Paralyzed with fear, Daniel could only watch as she lifted her arm and extended a finger, beckoning him with a gnarled and beckoning gesture. In a moment of courage fueled by desperation, Daniel tore his gaze away and scrambled down the ladder, his heart pounding like a drum. He stumbled through the woods, branches clawing at his skin, terror urging him forward. When he finally reached his house, his breath ragged and his body trembling, he dared a glance back at the treehouse. The figure had disappeared, leaving only the ominous sway of the wind chime as a testament to its presence. Daniel knew then that he had unwittingly trespassed into a realm beyond his understanding, a realm inhabited by spirits or entities that bide explanation. In the days that followed, Daniel avoided the treehouse like a plague, the fear of encountering the woman again consuming his thoughts. He sealed the entrance and tried to put the haunting experience behind him, but no matter how hard he tried, the memory lingered like a dark cloud casting a shadow over his once beloved sanctuary. As the years passed, Daniel became a recluse, haunted by the events that had unfolded in that treehouse. The whispers, the shadows, the beckoning figure. They were etched into his mind, a nightmare that refused to fade. He moved away from the house, leaving the treehouse to stand as a silent testament to the mysterious and the unknown.